<coughs> praise the Lord. We give God praise for this opportunity. Live forever. Um, kings and queens, my name is Pastor Michael Nuago, and I'm the president of Penel City Prayer Palace. It is a non-denominational prayer fellowship that is based in Accra, Ghana. And uh, our official meeting days are usually Tuesdays mornings at 10, then Saturday and Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Um, your very good friend, Pastor Michael, I am equipped and, and with all the relevant tools to help empower you to pray. And so I want to use this particular uh, virtual means to reach you during this worldwide pandemic. My dear brethren, based on Psalm 91, verse 5 and 6, we Bible declares that we should not be afraid of the terror by night, or the arrow that flies by day, or by the pestilence that stuck in darkness, or the waster that waste at noonday. And so we are taking this opportunity to, to pray around all the clock. And so I want to use this opportunity to invite you, to invite your family members, invite your friends to join us on all our social media handles. And uh, get to get to us on City, Penel City, sorry, Penel City Prayer Palace to watch us together with the family on a watch party, create a watch party, send a share to somebody, and let's together do this. Understand that in Penel City, this is where we meet God face to face. We are beginning today, the 21st day of April's prayer time. It is our Tuesday prayer time, and so we're going to go more into prayer this particular day. And so we are beginning with revelations. I'm picking from my book, Prayer Made Simple. And so I'm picking from Revelations chapter 2, verse number 14 and verse 15. Revelations chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. He said, Nevertheless, these few things I have against you, that some of you hold on to the teachings of Balaam. Some of you hold on to the teachings of Balaam, um, who taught Balak to entice Israel to sin by eating food sacrifice to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Verse 15, and it states, Likewise, you also have those who hold on to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Then verse 16 ends by saying, verse 16 says that likewise, verse 16 says, Repent therefore, otherwise, repent therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth with the sword of my mouth. We are going to pray two prayers. The first prayer is that Lord deliver me from the doctrine of Bala and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. What are these two doctrines? The first doctrine of Balaam is where selfishness comes in and where sin is the center of it all. Then greed is the center of it all. Then the next part is the Nicolaitans who feel that I know it all. Our prayer this afternoon is that Lord deliver me from the doctrine of Balaam and Bala and from the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. If you are ready to make a prayer this afternoon, say with me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come on the basis of your word and I declare, and I deliver, declare me, deliver me, oh Lord, oh Lord from the hold, from the hold, from the hold of the Nicolaitans, from the ideas of Balaam and Balak. In the name of Jesus, come on, lift your prayer and ask for deliverance from this. The doctrines of God, their teachings and their beliefs, 
We come this particular day, Jehovah, pull us out from it, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for that grace, O God, set us free at this time from the hold of Balaam and Balak, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for that deliverance right now. We speak, O God, for that deliverance right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. So God, we pray, O oh God, in the doctrine, infiltrated into my life, infiltrated into my time. I pray right now that Lord, I shall be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak it at this moment in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you will deliver in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is speaking and said, I will fight you with the sword of my mouth. That is very interesting. You want to pray, know also that your mouth is a sword. According to Isaiah 49, he said, you make my mouth like sharpened sword. You want to pray right now that just like an arrow is polished to be sharp, Lord, make my mouth sharp. Whatever I say, let it happen. Whatever I decree, let it happen. Until you say something, nothing happens. So you want to make a declaration into the heavens and declare that by my lips, let there be total and total deliverance. Say with me, in the name of Jesus, name of I, Jesus. Declare, I declare my lips are sharp. My lips are sharp. My lips are sharp. My lips are sharp. By the word of God, word of in, God. Psalm in Psalm 45, my mouth, my mouth is, ready is ready like a pen, like a pen of, a of a ready writer. And right now, and right I, now rewrite I rewrite life, life in, the in the place of death. Of death. I, declare I declare I will not die. Will not die. My family will not my die. Will my die. nation will not die. die. There will not be dead bodies in my continent, in my region, in the on the streets of my well, in the name of Jesus. Whatever man have pronounced, man have declared, I demand right now by my voice, I reverse negative confessions, negative confessions in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up that sword mouth. Open that sword mouth. Make a declaration with that sword mouth. Make a pronouncement with that sword mouth. Declare what you want to see by the sword mouth. Pronounce what you want to see by the sword mouth. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Satan has no hold of our nation. He has no hold of our continent. People will not die. Dead bodies will not be left on, on, on the roads of our nation. We declare in the name of Jesus. God is preserving our continent. God is preserving life. God is preserving people. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now by prayer in the name of Jesus, divine security and preservation. I speak it now. I declare it now by my sharp mouth. I speak in the name of Jesus. Nobody will die. We hold the power of COVID-19. We stop death. We stop death. We stop this virus. We stop this virus in the name of Jesus. We stop its flu. We stop its spread. We stop its movement in the name of Jesus. We lift our mouth in prayer. We lift our shopping tongues in prayer. And we stop this COVID-19 in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You want to prophesy into your own life this particular day that whatever I say about myself shall happen. Amen. If you are ready for that warfare, say with my mouth, mouth. sharpen like, like a sword, with my mouth, mouth. polish like an arrow. Like right, now, right now, I speak into I my speak life. Into my I, will I will prosper. I will excel. I will excel. Whatever, I touch, whatever I touch, it will progress. progress. In the name of Jesus, I will 
will be well. I will be healthy in the name of Jesus. I will be wealthy. I will handle wealth in the name of Jesus. I will be prosperous. I declare I will be a channel of blessing to other people in my community. I will be a channel of blessing to people in my area in the name of Jesus. I declare by my sharp mouth I refuse to die before my time in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift a voice and make a prayer. Declare it right now by the word of Jehovah. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Ah, we declare right now in the name of Jesus. We speak it right now. We declare it at this moment. Hey, we shall not die before our time. We will not die before our city. We shall not die before our moment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming online for us to pray. It is good to pray. This is a Tuesday time. It is our warfare. It's deliverance time. We are believing the power of God hit you where you are right now as your family surround the set for us to watch as you are surrounding that 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 handset as you are surrounding that that laptop you are surrounding that that screen we are believing the power of god will be transmitted through these virtual waves and hit you where you are in the name of jesus i come with a sure word to somebody this particular day from acts chapter 3 acts chapter 3 acts chapter 3 verse 1 running to verse number in Acts chapter 3 verse 1 to verse number 10. Babu said one day, oh I like how he started, he said one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. It was 3 in the afternoon and while they were going now a cripple from Beth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. There he was put every day, take note of that, to beg to those who were there, who were entering the court for arms. Verse number three, when the man saw Peter and John, he said, he asked for them of money and Peter said, straight, he said, look straight at us. Look at us, verse number five. So the man, gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Then Peter, taking him by the right hand, helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles were strong. He jumped on his feet and began to walk then he went in with them into the temple court walking jumping and praising god Amen. verse 9 and verse 10 says that then all the people that saw him walking and praising god came and recognized that this was the same man who was sitting before i entered mm. was sitting at the gate called beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement of what had happened to him lord bless these lips that explain your word Amen. and bless everybody that hears me this moment let this time be a blessing in jesus mighty name amen, amen. i want to share with you in this time something i call locked out and stacked in the same place locked out and stacked in the same place the story of acts chapter 3 brings in a broader picture the picture of genesis chapter 3 for you to get the full picture because this is the first time after the resurrection of Jesus 
and the baptism of the Holy Ghost that his disciples go into a church and um, then they got there and lifted a man who was crippled to start walking and they used their encounter with Jesus at the cross and Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost to bring the man back to walk in the same virtue in Genesis chapter 3 man has been crippled by sin man got himself stuck and locked out by the same tree standing at the same tree they were locked out by the same hearing the same voice and because they could not move they made a wrong decision so when man was locked out and stuck at the same place man now needed somebody to bring him up and let him start to walk and so when you look at it in that context you appreciate the story and you appreciate the story how when man was gestured God went through a process by letting this man who has been stuck in one place to start walking into his presence I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever makes us stand at one place, the power of God will give us a movement. Amen. Understand that in our world, God created everything to be on the move. You know that when you were born, you didn't look like the way you look. You have moved in life. So life comes with progress and advancement. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, running to verse number 3, he said, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was voidless and for a uh, uh, formless and void and the spirit of God moved so God always is on the move Psalm 37 verse 23 and 24 talks about the fact that he said that the steps of a good man so what he's talking about that he didn't say the feet of a good man he said the steps the steps so God expects you and I to move God expects you and I to advance in life and so when God chose and decided that I am going to let man move, I'm going to let man move, there came a time where a man, a two men met, and when they met, they met in water. At that time they met in water, they were not seeing each other. Then they met in water again, now they were seeing each other. Who am I talking about? A man called John the Baptist. The mother Elizabeth was pregnant, and John the Baptist was in water in the mother's womb. And then he met that morning another Messiah in water. And when the two of them met, a man that was bringing lame man back to restoration, when he met the other man, there was movement. And so John had grew, and now he was baptizing by Jordan. He was baptizing people at Jordan. And whilst he was baptizing, Jesus walked into that same water. Two friends in water two friends in water and Jesus tells him that listen do it as it plays you the story brings to mind certain things I want us to pick and now enter prayer this particular afternoon this man Babu says that one day John Peter and John were going to pray Peter is different from John I can't have time to go into that let me leave that for another day Peter and John were two different groups of people but in the midst of their differences God was able to use the two of them to do a miracle there comes a time in our life that God doesn't need all of us to be the same. He needs uniqueness in our variety still to come to be able to do something. We need a collaboration of black and white for the keyboards to work. He needs a collaboration of the weak and the strong to make the battle wiser and better. He needs a combination of, of different minds because he gives the vision to one and gives a provision to the other. Amen. So he said, 
John, Peter and John were walking together at the time of prayer. Time, time, time. Let me run on. But Bible said they met a man who was carried to that place. Let me read what it says, verse number two. Now, a man was lame from birth and he was being carried to the temple called Beautiful and he was put there every day, every day. So this man, number one, he was tapped with his family. He was locked out with the family. Remember in those days, it's not like this our time where children born with physical challenges are given wheelchairs, are taken care of at homes. They didn't have that opportunity to bring this boy out. So he was a normal boy born. Everybody knew he was a baby crawling. One day they expected him to move, start walking. One year passed, two years passed. And the boy will not move. His body will not move. His eyes were open. His brains were working. His ears were seen, but his feet were not working. Can you see a lame man in our world that sin has crippled us? Sin has made us not to be able to move. Bible says in some 20, uh, Romans 23 verse, sorry, Romans 3:23. Romans 3.23, he said, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That the glory of God was taken from man. He was stuck with his family. He was stuck with the family. Bible said he was, he was, he was lame from the womb. But Bible didn't say that he was lame from creation. <laughs> wow. Because lame from the womb was different from lame from creation. Now, when he was lame from the womb, womb means that it was his predicament started with the womb that carried him. His predicament began with the conception, the place that carried him. Can you imagine if you were born in another part of the world, where more than where you are born today, certain things you are going through now, would you be going through them? So the womb that carries you describes what is happening to you. But listen, you can also give yourself a rebirth and change what is happening about your life. The womb conceived this guy. The womb constructed this life. The next thing he was stuck to was he was stuck with some invisible friends. He was stuck to these same friends for years and all what the friends was doing was that they were enjoying the, 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 the benefit of the boy. They only carry him there because he couldn't walk. They will carry him there, then he will beg. Then when they are coming for him, they will get their share. There are some people in this life and they never want you to go beyond where you have got to because they are getting benefits from your life because they have something they are enjoying from you they wish that you will remain like this that all the time you will just keep saying have a local feel can i get something can i get two cities for credit can i get two cities so all the time they put you at the begging end of life but i speak as a prophet over yes. you today i declare in the name of jesus Amen. anybody benefiting from you Amen. wrongly because of your predicament i declare in the name of jesus that god will deliver you Amen. you are rising up. You are locked out. Yes, you are stuck out. Amen. By the name of Jesus, Amen. you are rising up. Rising you are rising up. up. Rising you are rising up. up. You are rising up. up. The guy was stuck with his friends. And the friends enjoyed the work. I've seen people that want you to be what you are. So that all the time you can be coming to them. They like it where you are. But I pray that by the time that COVID-19 story is over, they will look for you at this same address and God will have changed your story. Amen. They will look for you at this same place and God will turn it around. Amen. If you are believing what I'm saying, just type it in and say God will turn it around. Turn just it turn it, around. type it and say God will turn it around. Turn because it around. I believe God so much that these friends who did not want this guy to enter the temple, 
there were other two friends who came and they said we do not have money to give you but we have something we can give you can you see in life where there comes a time we focus on what we don't have more than what we have that you know that listen I don't have money but I have wisdom I don't have money but I have, I have skills I don't have money I have breakthrough I have something to break me out of this situation somebody put it this way starting a business you don't need to say I don't have money because lack of ideas blocks you from making money in life these young guys enjoy this boy's predicament so if they go into prayer what they will be praying about is that oh Lord let this guy still be crippled when I wake up to when I go to him tomorrow let him still be crippled that guy can carry him. because the day the boy walks their money is finished the day the guy gets a breakthrough that is the end of their story but I pray God will disappoint the evil expectations of men Bible said one day Paul had he, had he had been sent with prisoners to go to a place and they were going to be sentenced to death and they were going to meet a higher power and whilst they were going Acts chapter 28 they had a storm encounter they came out from the storm encounter and when they got to the land it was a land of Patmos and Bible said whilst he was gathering sticks so that he could warm himself a snake tied himself to his hand and beat him and everybody was watching and they were looking at him let's see what will happen let's see what will happen but Bible said they kept watching they kept watching and they kept watching I speak as a prophet over somebody's life your enemies are watching they are seeing they are thinking how far how when will God do it they will watch forever they will watch forever Amen. they will watch forever Amen. they are seeing if you can come out of this they are thinking can you break out of this they are saying is it possible that God will deliver you I came to tell you today the God will say, he's sending your Peter, he's sending your John Amen. into that situation. Amen. The people have carried this guy for 40 years, but one day, one day, one day, one day, I pray for you today, that is your day of deliverance. Amen. That is your day of deliverance. Amen. We are in a service now. That is your day of deliverance. Amen. Can you type it in and say, my time of deliverance, my time of deliverance, my time of deliverance. Deliverance. My, time, my of deliverance. time of deliverance. One day, the story changed. That God needed to tell those who were watching this guy, who were carrying this guy, God needed to tell them that listen, you're watching and you're carrying this guy is over. Carrying this guy has ended. I need to do something new in his life. Okay. I pray today that God will bring you helpers. Amen. God will bring you right people Amen. that will raise you out from the pit. And I believe that today I am sent on this set to declare to you as an oracle of God that you are coming out today. Amen. You are lifted from your place of lameness. Amen. You are lifted from your place of nothingness. Amen. You are lifted from your place of weakness. Amen. You are lifted from your place of shortcoming. Amen. That God is lifting you to walk. Amen. That the cross is giving you power. Amen. He will lift you out of the merry pit Amen. and put your feet on a stone. Amen. He will put your feet on the rock. Amen. He will put you on a solid ground. Amen. He will make you to walk. Amen. You will not die. You will not die. Amen. God, I lift you up today. Amen. I lift you up of that pit. Amen. I place you at the place of honor. Amen. He was not only stuck with his family. He was not only stuck with his friends. He was stuck in his situation. Stuck. And so you see, there are times that when you are stuck in your situation, all what you are looking for is to try to adjust. Can you see that this man, his eyes, everything about him was working well. Oh. The only one thing that was not working well, he couldn't walk. Can you imagine that in our whole world that we are crippled by one virus? One. It is only one issue that crippled this guy and brought him down businesses are shutting down companies are closing down families cannot do family gathering friends cannot do parties people cannot have weddings now everything is shut down just because of one virus one virus and so we need to adjust washing hands we need to adjust keeping distance we need to adjust wearing face masks we need to adjust 
So this young guy was adjusting to his time. He was adjusting to his situation. He was developing um, uh, adaptation, adaptation skills, uh, adaptation uh, probabilities. I need to adopt, I need to be used to this. He was stuck there. Let's talk about the last one I entered into prayer with you. He was stuck by the beautiful gate, not knowing that his greatest miracle was in his greatest disappointment. He was stuck at the beautiful gate, not knowing that his greatest miracle was, it was locked up in his greatest disappointment. He was expecting money. That was his job. So he woke up in the morning, going to look for money as usual. He got to the place where he was looking for money. Then he saw two young guys coming. And when he looked at the young guys, the young guy said, look on us, we are bringing you help. The Bible said he fixed his eyes on them. He, he, because he wanted to receive something. He said, today, the money these people will give me will solve my problem. His eyes was fixed on them. He said, today is the day, uh, today is my last day of suffering. Because this old man and young man, Paul, Peter and John coming, oh, I'm finished. My breakthrough has happened. He fixed his eyes on them. And whilst he was looking at them, Peter now goes and says, silver and gold, I don't have. His greatest disappointment was his greatest miracle. When he said, I don't have money, but such as I have, I bring to you today, your disappointment in life is the same place God will use to bring you a testimony in life. I speak today, on this Tuesday, our fire prayer deliverance and prayer section. I speak to your life today in the name of Jesus that that which looks like a disappointment, may God tell it to be your greatest miracle. Amen. Two prayers and I'm out of your way this afternoon. The guy was stuck, locked out, and stuck at the same place. But one day came when he got up, he entered the church, jumping and praising God because God had done the miracle. God had done the testimony. God had done it. And so I know I'll meet somebody at the other side, exalting and praising God because God has showed himself great over your life. You are praying two prayers and I'm out of your way today. Bible said in verse number one, one day Peter and John, you are praying today and say, Lord, let today be my day of change. One day the stuck man's story change. So, oh Lord, let my story change today. Amen. I like a scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. I think verse 26, verse 27. He said, it is not right. For you to tell a man, go and come tomorrow, when it is in your power to help the person. If you can help somebody, don't tell the person, don't withhold good from the one whom it is said, or tell the person, go and come. God, if you can do it, do it now. That is what the Bible says. If God has power to do it, then he must do it. Or ye prim prim for he is an ever-present help in times of trouble. You and I want to pray and say, Lord, let today be my day. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus, I speak into the atmosphere. I declare today is my day. Today is my day. My day of salvation. My day of testimony. Come on, lift your voice and pray. One day, one day, one day, one day, one day. One day, one day, one day, one day, one day. Come on, make a prayer today. I will go home with my testimony today. I will call, I will have a call of a testimony. Come on, speak it today. Come on, prophesy it today. Come on, declare it today. Come on, speak it today. One day, one day, one day, one day. Come on, today is my testimony. Come on, declare it today is my day. I speak that that day. That this man's testimony changed. My testimony is changing. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in the day. 
I'm speaking to the day. I'm speaking to the day. I'm speaking to the day. I'm speaking to the day. I'm prophesying to the day. This is my 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 day. I prophesy. I prophesy. I declare it. I speak it out. This is my day. This is my day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bible said one day. The guy was carried for 40 years. But one day. Remember Jesus lived for 33 years. That means that the guy's problem started 7 years before Jesus was born. But that means that his, his time was not up. When my time is up, Lord, I refuse to remain crippled. Amen. When my time is up, Lord, I will not stay in this same Amen. problem. When that my one day comes, when that one day comes, my story will be heard abroad. Amen. Those who pass me by and enter the temple, Amen. I will enter the same place. Amen. Those who thought I will never enter, grace will make me enter the same Amen. door. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are praying your next prayer and I'm out of your way this afternoon, is that when that day came, he saw Peter and John, the Bible said, he asked them, please, can I have some money? Peter and John said, look on us. And that's your prayer. Look on us. You want to say, God, I give you all my attention so that you can give me direction in life. Amen. God, I give you all my attention. When he said, look on us, remember, it is a huge church building. A lot of people are entering, going, coming. And listen, the guy is asking money. And your first statement is say, look on us. So the guy knows that I should shift my focus from other people entering. And I should focus on these two guys. That is what the Bible says. So he said, look on us, please. I should leave everybody. Focus on these two guys. Then he said, silver and gold I don't have, my brother. If you know you don't have money. Why do you, why don't you leave the way? Let me ask somebody else. Why are you wasting my time? But what Bible is teaching us is that we must give God all our attention so that he can give our life direction. Because if the guy looks at you and you can't give him something, he looks at another one. So God needed to put his direction, his focus on one thing. Are you ready to pray right now? You want to lift up prayer. You say, Heavenly Father, give me grace to put all my attention on you so that you can direct my life. Come on, lift up prayer now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I feel very strongly God is bringing deliverance to a group of people that have been kept bound at the same place, locked out at the same place, stuck in the same place. Deliverance is coming to you right now. Through this virtual ways, power of deliverance is coming to you. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, anytime you will watch this clip, anytime you will watch this video, let the Holy Ghost power that is transcending now, let it reach you where you are. Let it reach you where you are. There is deliverance in the air. There is deliverance in that office. There is deliverance in that room. There is deliverance in that house. In the name of Jesus, your business will not be stuck. Your life will not be stuck. Your job will not be stuck. You will not be stuck in the relationship. You will not be stuck in this life. You will not be stuck in this habit. You will not be stuck in it. In the name of Jesus, I command right now, you are rising up from this habit. You are rising up from this behavior. You are rising up from this lifestyle. You are rising up. I declare now, you cannot be stuck. You cannot be stuck. You cannot.
I declare that healing power that which I see is happening to you now. I declare in the name of Jesus that by the healing power of God, you are getting out right now. By the healing power of God, I speak deliverance. You are healed. Anybody hearing me under the yoke of sickness, under the power of COVID-19, I speak right now. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we send for the word of God yes, to the north, yes, to the Lord. south, yes, to the Lord. east, yes, to the west. Yes, we declare the name of Jesus. Yes, healing is your portion. Yes, Rise up from that bed. 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 Yes, that bed. Yes, that Virus has no hold over you. Yes, I declare yes, right now. Yes, May your immune system yes, be boosted with strength. Yes, be boosted with power. Yes, be boosted with strength. Yes, In the name of Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that this deliverance service has testimonies flowing in. Yes, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ, we call it done. Amen. 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 This is our Tuesday prayer time. And um, thank you for making time to join us. Hope you come on our line again. Um, the, the, the GPCC with all their bodies are coming up with a three-day fasting. And the fasting is starting from Friday. So we are going to be praying Friday afternoon. And uh, we're doing Friday afternoon, Friday, um, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a three-day fast. And so I want you to get yourself in it. Yesterday I was saying 21 days. But today we have been corrected. It is a three-day fast. And so let's do it together. And let's get into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. God richly, richly bless you. I want to say a great, great thank you to all men of God.